Hello, welcome to Mark with you, JD. Today, we are looking at repeated measures ANOVA. And of course, knowing how uh, computationally intensive these things can be, I've just decided to do for the other types of ANOVA. I'll just show the Python code and explain. Then, of course, I'll uh, explain the basic concepts and all that. And of course, in the real setting, I, I don't think anybody will expect you to do um, all these things manually. Okay, so repeated measures ANOVA is just like um, what the kind of thing we require paired test, whether Z or T test for, because it's, uh, it analyzes data where the same subjects are tested under different conditions or at different times. So you have the same subject, for instance, and then you take data from the same uh, samples, you know, over, I mean, at different time points under different conditions. So an example will be measuring blood pressure of patients before, during, and after treatment. So maybe there's something you want to do with, with the information about blood pressure, right? So a patient comes, you take their blood pressure, and then when they are being treated, you take the blood pressure and after. And basically what you want to see is if there is any significant difference uh, between the blood pressure at those different time points. So that's why the null hypothesis would be something like the blood pressure of patients is the same across all the three time points before, during, and after treatment. And the alternative hypothesis, H1, would be that the mean blood pressure of patients differs at least at one of the time points before, during, or after treatment. So coming to the Python code now, here we need pandas for data analysis. We need statsmodel.api. And then we need start with ANOVA, where we get the ANOVA repeated measures. Uh, uh, should I call that a function now or a library? Uh, I think it will be more of a function or a module. So, okay, I think it's always good to have lines so we can visual, we can, I can easily make reference. So, I mean, look at from line six to 17, we have. A, we have a Python dictionary straight away converted into a data frame. So, and then we have the key value, the keys are subject, treatment, and the blood pressure values. So talking about the subjects, right, we are, we're taking 30 subjects uh, numbered 1 to 10 in three different places. So that 1 to 10, star 3 in line 7 actually says that we have 30 subjects, but then they are numbered from 1 to 10. Oh, sorry. We actually have 10 subjects, sorry. But, you know, because we are taking the blood pressure before, during, and after treatment. So we, are, we have 30 data points on each of them. So before, we don't, they are numbered. So the same uh, persons, 1 to 10, 1 to 10. But this times 3 is necessary so that we can match that with the data we uh, will take at those different time points. And talking about the treatments now, we have before treatment, that's times 10. That's, you have 10 data points before treatment, 10 data points. Uh, I mean, 10, they are 10, right? So you take their blood pressure before treatment, 10 of them you take their blood pressure during, and 10 of them you take their blood pressure after. And that is talking about the treatment. Now talking about the blood pressure values actually now. So here, um so, so before treatment that's measurement before treatment that's what you have in line 11 that 130 to 127 and measurement during treatment is now 125 to 124 measurement after is 118 to 118 in line 15 so that's that's the data right there of course you may want to visualize that oh if, interestingly that's what i tried to do in line 20 so to so display the first few rows in fact i'm displaying the whole data uh, with what I did here, um, display the data, display the data. Let me just put that. We display the data, everything, you know, then so print data is going to help us see what the data looks like. Of course, we can see that already, but then it, it brings it out as a data frame, a two dimensional thing with row and column. Then in line 24, that's where the actual ANOVA is taking place. So given a variable name AOV, then we actually have the ANOVA repeated measures. That's where we are doing the fitting with the blood pressure values, with the subject, uh, uh, the 10 subjects whose data are taken at three different points in time. And then we have 
uh, within treatment and then we take the fit for that. Then in line 27, we display the results for the repeated measures and over. Uh, we print we, we the results, we extract some vital information, things like F distribution and all of that. Then in line 33 and 34, we talk about the p-value because at the end of the day, we want to convert, we want to compare the p-value with the significance level. So p-value is extracted as AOV dot ANOVA table, PR greater than F of the treatment. And then we print the p-value. So we say the p-value is whatever it is. And then I have a blank print in line 36. In 30, lines 30 and 36, they are blank prints. All of what they are doing is to actually just give us um some space, like, you know, when the results are displayed, so we can have space between them. So everything is not joined together. So basically, for readability. So in lines 39 to 45, that's where we are making all the decisions. So of course, line 39 shows the significance level. Uh, you know, that's 0 0.05 as usual. And then we have the conditions, um, you know, for the hypothesis. So if the p-value, the p-value obtained in line 33 is less than the significance level alpha, then we print that the decision is that we reject the null hypothesis and the conclusion will be that there's a statistically significant difference in blood pressure across treatment conditions. But if uh, it is otherwise, that is, if p-value is greater than alpha, then we say we fail to reject the null hypothesis. That means we accept the null hypothesis, and that means there's no sig statistically significant difference in blood pressure across treatment conditions. So in one blue, we can run this, and then, uh, of course, it's taken a bit of time because it's not so easy. So see what we have now. So we have 30 data points, but it is 30 because it's repeated measures, right? So take a measurement of 10 people before their treatment with their corresponding, so you get the blood pressure. Then the second set is from, uh, you know, where, you know, counting in Python is from zero to, from zero. So zero to nine actually is actually 10, you know. Uh, so of course we have that here. So one to 10, one to 10 for each one. Then during treatment, we also take the blood pressure. Then after treatment, this is what that looks like. Then for the ANOVA, you see all of these things. So we have the treatment, the F, the F statistic, you have that there, and you have the degrees of freedom and, you know, the PR greater, greater than F, that's probability I want to believe. So at the end of the day, the p-value is, for, for uh, you know, very small, that's 0 0.80 like before you get to 4938 and so on. So as a result of that, um, this p-value is definitely less than the alpha in line 39. And if that happens, then it means we reject the null hypothesis. So the decision is that you reject the null hypothesis. And the conclusion is that there's a statistically significant difference in blood pressure across treatment conditions. Of course, we don't really know where the, where the difference lies. And that is why post hoc tests are needed you know, to go to dig further. But my guess would be something like maybe the treatment is effective as the blood pressure, you know, generally decreases over time. Of course, that's not guaranteed, right? It may just, the blood pressure may even increase if the um, treatment doesn't go as planned. But I mean, my guess is, will be that um, probably the treatment is effective and then the blood pressure is lowered. Okay, so that's that about uh, Python code for repeated measures ANOVA. So um, I'll be taking, I'll be showing the code again for, I think, it, what is that thing called? I think it's mixed design ANOVA, mixed design ANOVA. So um, look out for that. If you have not subscribed to this channel, be sure to do that. And of course, hit the notification bell so you can always get notified each time a new video is released. Don't forget to comment. Tell me if you want to learn about a particular a subject or you want to solve a problem let me know then of course like 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 then then um share so that more people can have access to all these things you're learning so till i see you again have a very great time bye